In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this nice little corner unit for a lizard cage. First, if you're working with polystyrene, which is styrofoam, you might want to think about wearing one of these. What I've done is uh, measured how long and how wide I want the uh, structure to be so that it'll still be able to fit back into uh, the aquarium. So, uh, cutting out the uh, floor plan here, and what I'm going to do is uh, glue two of these thin pieces together to create a stronger uh, support beam. I'm gluing together the rest of the uh, floor plan using uh, liquid nails to glue this together. So I've got my thicker, thus stronger uh, support beam. Put that in the uh, back corner. And what I like to do to sort of eliminate the uh, 90 degree angles uh, and straight lines is put in some corner wedges, sort of round out uh, some of the areas of the structure. It also helps to support that beam. So I'm just going to progressively uh, build up the structure from the bottom, just sort of uh, improvising as I go here. Going to put in a uh, front support beam. And then what I actually ended up deciding to do is extend uh, the floor plan, making sure I can still fit it back into the cage. And I give them a little front porch here. And uh, got a little uh, support beam going across the top now and just continuously building up from the bottom. And you can tell with uh, these pieces that I'm putting on, I've tried to, just with my fingers, um, take the straight edge off by just breaking off little pieces. Uh, basically, that's done to make it look more naturalistic just to get rid of as many straight lines and right angles as humanly possible. What I've got here is going to be a face plate. This will help uh, again get rid of some of that right angle look to it. Plus it will allow the lizard to be able to climb up the uh, front of the structure. So I've got a uh, thicker piece of styrofoam here. I'm just going to cut into it and try to carve out a rock-like looking piece to go on the top. And here's a little piece, and you can do the same thing with just building up grout later, but to get rid of that uh, sharp corner, that 90 degree angle there, make it look more like a rounded uh, cave. What I've done here is I've got some uh, smaller stones that I'm going to glue on that I'm going to try to have them hang over the styrofoam uh, that's underneath them to give a slightly different look to the rock structure. And now's the fun stage of uh, grouting this entire thing. What I've got is a non-sanded grout mixed with water. And you want to do the first uh, two or three coats in a rather thin coat, watered down so it gets in all the little uh, crevices build up thicker as you go. Another good idea is to get some concrete color mix, cement color, put it in there for your additional coats, that way you know where you've been if you get uh, called away from it. You see the last layer is rather thick here, 
This will be this will end up being the basking spot. This is just a really uh, easy way of adding detail. I've got a really thick grout, so very little water, and just sort of putting it on in globs and uh, all over the just in little areas actually, and then coming back two to five minutes later, letting it dry a little bit. And just with a knife, uh, using an upward or downward uh, motion to put in some ridges. And then a lot of your uh, detail in your styrofoam sculpt will be ruined by putting the grout on so you can reestablish some of those uh, finer edged uh, portions to the sculpt like right here, putting that in will enable the lizard to be able to climb up a lot more easily. What I'm doing here is sort of uh, brushing away some of the weaker parts to that detail I put in. You can see right here some of it coming off. You want to get rid of all those weak parts in that uh, grout before you start painting it. What I'm doing here is a, an optional stage where I'm putting in some of the darker detail first before I put in uh, other layers of color. You could end up covering up most of that dark detail anyway. One way of applying color is with the sponge obviously, but faster way is just using a cheap water bottle, putting water and uh, cheap acrylic paint and you've got a poor man's paint gun. Very easy way of covering a lot of ground quickly. What I've got here is a sponge that I'm going to do a dry sponge technique where you get rid of 90 some percent of the paint on a paper towel or rag. What I've got here is a light sand color. I'm going to go back up here with what uh, little paint is left, I'm going to put some on the ridges as sort of a highlight. And if you do this correctly, you can make the stone or rock look uh, like old rock that's worn. Give it sort of a weathered look. And you can go back in and put in some, uh, some dark te detail after you put in the color. So, I mean, you can work hours and hours on this, putting in uh, detail after detail. Just putting in highlights and uh, dark areas, and, or spending hours putting in those ridges with the thick grout. What I've got here is a uh, thinned out sealer. I've got Mod Podge uh, All Surface Sealer, which is non toxic. Thinned out in a water bottle and just spray it on. It's a very quick way of uh, applying your sealant. You probably want to put uh, four to five coats of this on your structure and don't forget to turn it over and get the underside of it. And before the uh, last coat dries, I'm going to put some fine grain sand before the last coat of uh, sealant dries as a way of giving the lizard some traction. Then you want to brush off the loose sand after you've let it dry. What I've got here is a way if you want to try to eliminate some of the high shine that the sealant uh, gives it is a product uh, that I found at a hardware store where it's like a flexible sponge uh, fine grained uh, sandpaper product. So we are basically finished. Now what uh, I usually do is put a little bit of uh, Velcro. Make sure the lizard's not able to uh, move it around so it's safe. And there you have it. Nice little corner unit for your baby bearded dragon or gecko or what have you.